Hey, it's me, the mouth of the sound, Jimmy Hart. Hey, check out my new tag team, baby, Money and the Foul. Hey, Jimmy, don't forget to tell them about Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Well, you know what, I would, but you already did it. Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and Pharaoh. The Monty and Pharaoh show. Monty and Pharaoh, bro. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. The Monty and the Pharaoh. The Monty and Pharaoh show. And you're watching the Monty and Pharaoh show. Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and the Pharaoh. 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 Monty and Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. And Monty and the Pharaoh. Oh, is it Monty and the Pharaoh? Monty and Pharaoh. The Monty and the Pharaoh show. Monty and the Pharaoh. To the Monty and the Pharaoh show. And it's Monty and the Pharaoh, baby. Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Oh, what a run. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Hey, cut <laughs> music. When you want the best in professional wrestling, Long Island, there's only one place you're going to get it. Right here, Monty and the Pharaoh. <laughs> now, that's not just the coolest, and that's not just the best. That, my friends, is just <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Monty and the Pharaoh. You've got the future Hall of Famer, that rocker, Marty Jannetty, and MJ in the house, and I'm sitting here with two more future Hall of Famers, Monty and the Pharaoh. We're doing that stuff, and we're going to rock it. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Duh. Oh my god. Because wait a minute, wait a minute. Wrestling's fake? Yeah. I'm Pharaoh, Pharaoh just found that out what right this, this moment, Rick right now. Way, way to go, Al. Oh, come on, man. Sorry, Pharaoh. Dream crusher. Welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty DeFaro, only seen here out of Long Island in Ron Konkuma at Indie Music TV. Ooh. And I'd like to welcome our special guest and our honor, Mr. Al Snow. Al, thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you. Thank what you does everybody you. want? Does that get annoying after no. a while? No, not at all. Really? So no. there. Is there anything that gets old? <laughs> Uh, Besides, me. <laughs> well, well, yeah, yeah, well, that's a good point. Me too. <laughs> Boy, did you open that door? <laughs> oh my lord! Al, before we get into some wrestling, I just want to ask you: How are you holding up during the COVID era and uh, what's going on in this country right now with the civil unrest that's going on? Uh, I'm doing okay. I mean, it's um, it's sad to see the situations that are out there and that are existing and going on at this time. But uh, you know, we're a great country. I mean. We really, truly are. For people that have not been outside of this country and seen the rest of the world, believe me, we are we are genuinely blessed here. We've got our problems, we have our issues, but we always see our way through it, and I think we will see our way through all of this as well. So you think there is a future for this country? <clears throat> of course, yes. Do you think things have changed as far as uh, what's going on? Are, more pe are people just more aware and getting involved? I mean... You know. Well, I think because of social media and, and you know, the Internet, uh, people are more aware of uh, everything nowadays, you know, the access to information is, is unprecedented, um, you know, and the level of sophistication of the uh, general population is at a much greater rate now than ever before. People were not stupid or not less intelligent, they were just more simplistic because their worldview was limited to their access. And now we have, you know, as a kid, a seven-year-old kid can access a real-time video of the Antarctic. You know, um, so that that viewpoint and that level of sophistication for for a general audience or a general population is going to be exponentially greater. Is that a good thing, though? Absolutely, yeah. Because is, we, is, you know, we have to. You know, I think in some ways, I think it's a good thing. I think uh, getting to where we are in society these days, in this country especially, um, we have it so well that we are now starting to uh, have the, the ability 
to focus on a lot of things and, and be triggered or offended by the least likely um, comment or expression uh, by an opposing viewpoint and, uh, you know, lash out um, and try to cancel those people out as quick as possible because we have the freedom to do it now. You know. Where do you feel the media falls in as far as their responsibility? While it's true that we have an absolute, un almost unlimited amount of information, what concerns me is, is the accuracy of aforementioned information. Where do you think the media's responsibility should lie? Should there be some sort of, and this well, may sound controversial, but do you think the government should do something? No. So how, how do, as citizens, we properly digest all this information when we, we do know some of it is completely you have to misleading. Be, you have to be self-responsible. Fair enough. A, it's a, a fascinating concept. Fair enough. You know, but for every right that you have as a U.S. citizen or as a, as a human being, you have a responsibility that is commensurate to that right. Mm -hmm. You have a right to free speech, but you have a responsibility to use it in the correct right. manner. Right. You know, use it without an agenda, right? Uh, correct. I mean, you can, you can, you're free to do whatever you want. Um, you know, but you have the responsibility to behave in a civil manner we, by exercising that freedom, you know. And just because somebody doesn't agree with you or doesn't see your viewpoint doesn't mean that you now have to cast stones at that person. Right. Um, because that now, it doesn't, it's a two-way street. They may not agree with you and you don't want them to cast stones at you because they don't, they just don't agree with you. You know, you have to understand that for every right you have, you have a responsibility. True. And if you're willing to give up those rights, or I, or I should say, if you're willing to give up those responsibilities, then you're willing to give up those rights. You're gonna have those rights, you're gonna have those responsibilities. If somebody goes, hey, don't worry, we'll take care of your responsibilities, guess what? Now you don't have any say in the rights. Right. Is that what's happening right now, though? Of course it is. Okay. Because right. everybody wants to be a victim now. No one wants to have self-responsibility. Right. Everybody wants to blame uh, and this is a very hot topic, but everybody wants to, you know, oh, the president this and the president. Listen, th those people in power do not care about you, period. They don't. I agree. And, yeah. and you think that putting a different man or a different or a female, it doesn't matter, male, female, put a different human being in an office as president is going to change your life? It ain't. Not going to happen. It's still the private barbecue. You change your life. Barbecue. They right. don't do anything for you, period. And, and if you think they do, ask yourself a couple questions. One, who in their right mind, who in their right mind spends $50 million on a campaign to get a job that pays them $174,000 a year? Mm. Mm -hmm. You don't think there's another agenda there? Of course. You don't think they're going to be making that money back somewhere? Of course. Well, well then why are we letting them do it? And why are we continuing to allow them to literally BS us? Listen, pro wrestling and politics are both a complete work. And in both of them, we have gotten <laughs> to the point with such hubris <laughs> that we think that we can sit there and tell our audiences respectively, hey, it is work and you're still going to buy a ticket to see the show. Right. <clears throat> so when they take your responsibilities, guess what else they're taking? Your freedom. They're taking your rights. That's right. Simple as that. No matter what the issue is, if somebody is willing to pay the bills for you, if someone is willing to handle your responsibilities, no if, ands, or buts about it. It's not politics. That's real life. Then they get to have the say. As far as the media is concerned, the media has never been a, a, a point of dissemination of information. You know, don't fool yourselves. The media has always been a business. You know, if you're on TV, if you're even if you're a news station or your news your news segment you're on TV to draw ratings you're on TV to draw ratings to garner advertising dollars you know if you're selling newspapers whether you're you're there to report information you're there to report news yes but you're there to sell newspapers because if you don't sell newspapers newspaper business goes out of business mm -hmm. and then it doesn't get to report the news so first and foremost Always remember that what you're watching is not 100% real. It is a business. What you're reading is not 100% real. It's a business. You know, it are points of information, but you should take your own responsibility because you have the right to do it and access your, you know, and, and do your homework and access your own points of information as well. 
and then get enough to where you can conjugate some kind of an educated opinion whenever you decide to voice it in a public forum. So, call me crazy, but I don't call you crazy. Logical, I'm, I mean, and I thought we were talking about wrestling, but we got all that. Listen, we uh, listen, we, uh, we we go whichever. So, how are you holding up with COVID? How's everything going? <laughs> oh my God! Our, Back to arm bars, please. Yeah. Jimmy's the uh, star of the show. He's going to hit you I with am? something called the juice. The juice. So in case the that sounds, doesn't know, that sounds kind of weird. Uh, a little bit. I, it's it's brought me out to Long Island to have some man hit me with the juice. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's great. It's not that's that great. juice. <laughs> um, Is that bottle full or empty? Uh, Thoughts of the state of professional wrestling. Yeah, let's go. The state of professional wrestling. Yeah. Today, uh, this day, the state of professional wrestling. How you feel about it? Oy. Well, that's a that's another loaded question. Go for um, it. It's a uh, there is more athletic ability that is in professional wrestling now than it's ever been in the history of of the uh, sport um, ever. But I think that. Uh, the true art form of professional wrestling uh, is is being lost um, due to the fact that the entry into professional wrestling has become so accessible and easy, and mm. um, the proliferation of uh, training schools uh, around literally around the world um, has led itself to where you have. A lot of the blind leading the blind, leading the blinder, um, and has created the degradation of what the real art of professional wrestling is. What is the real art of professional wrestling to Al Snow? <laughs> it's not to me. That, that this is an, an opinion. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the real art of professional wrestling is to work an audience. The term work is not someone's physical capabilities, which is what now it is being attested to. Uh, to work an audience is to basically perform a con uh, to make an audience believe a lie. And the only lie about professional wrestling is, is that we are actually trying to win and not lose. A competitive contact combat, combat sport. Um, that's not the case anymore. Um, the belief is with hel held in, in wrestling circles that it is now about that the wrestling business has changed, meaning we no longer are trying to sell an audience on the belief of a competitive situation. We're trying to sell them on what we physically can do. So we're no longer selling the who of the person and we're no longer selling the why, we're simply selling the what. And nothing could be further from the truth. That's never changed. It never will change. The wrestling business has evolved. It's grown, which it's, it's evolved over the last 100 years. Since the 1920s, it's continued to evolve style-wise. Um, uh, uh, Athleticism-wise, it has been. But we've always sold the who and the why, and now we have deviated so far from that to where the performers strictly tried to sell simply the what. My, I should never be sitting there as an audience member, as just a wrestling fan, and go, why, why would they do that? Why are they doing that? It, within the context of trying to win and not lose, if I'm asking a question why that's happening, you've lost me. Right. And I believe that the general audience is the same way. If they are sitting there asking, why, why are they doing that? I don't understand. Or why is the referee not counting them out? Or why is the referee allowing them to do things that are clearly not within the rules? Then we're done. We, you know, I, I, I'm not. You've lost me, and I'm not going to follow the story. If there was a story at all, I feel that uh, almost all companies these days, I think, really, um, I know AEW does. I know that uh, Ring of Honor does. I know Impact, and, and I'm not. Please don't misunderstand. I'm not disparaging anybody for doing it, um, but I think primarily they, they, their product and their approach, they market to a wrestling fan audience strictly a wrestling fan audience and i am consciously trying to market towards a general audience as much as possible mm. so you know there those are two different ways of two different approaches and uh you know i think what we do in ovw appeals to a wrestling audience um uh 
and I think, but I think also if you're the average person flipping through the channels and you see what we're doing there, that I've, the biggest compliment I've gotten is that I've had people that one, were never wrestling fans, and two, that were casual ones that have come or watched the show and then were like, you know what, I really enjoyed this because, and this was the statement, I could sit down and I could pick up on what everybody was doing, who they were, uh, why they were doing it, what was at stake, and I could follow the stories like that. And that, for me, is the biggest biggest compliment I could get. You know, the last thing I ever want is for you to come in and be sitting there and just be confused and be like, I don't, I don't know who to cheer, I don't know who to boo, I don't, I don't know who to, you know, want to be. I, I, I just don't, I can't follow this. And that I see happening more and more these days with other uh, styles or other approaches. And that's what I want to try, that pitfall I want to try to avoid for us. How do you feel about spot fests? Because that's also been part of the, the change in pro wrestling over the years. Of course, there's this increased athleticism. How do you feel about all these moves that in the old days would have clearly been finishers? Well, I love it. in the first minute. Of hey, the listen, match. I appreciate athleticism. I, I sure. think that the, I, and I think, you know, uh, the moves and things like that are fantastic. I just don't think that, I think that it's a, it's a big mistake to um, to do it just to do it. Um, you know, and that's what I, that's where we get back to, they're selling what they do, okay? They're not selling it for why they do it. Is the and psychology it, gone in this business? Well, it's it's uh, definitely, uh, it's definitely being uh, thrown to the wayside. Um, and a lot of it is because, you know, the, the, the general, general, general opinion is, oh, the wrestling business has changed. Uh, back to what we were talking about where the performers will tell you, or they've told me they'll, you know, well, it's, it's, not, it's not, you know, fans, they don't care about that stuff anymore. They don't care about, the, you know, why. All they want to see is cool moves. They want to they mm. see what you do. And I'm like, okay, and I always have four questions. First question, okay, yeah. if what, what you say is true, Hmm. That the wrestling business has changed. Okay. That the the audience, the average person, no longer cares about the win and losing thing. They just want to see you do cool stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say it, it, that, that that's not the case. Okay. But if that's the truth, okay, why am I paying commentators to sit at ringside and basically verbally try to tell a story about how you two are competing against each other? And selling it like it's a sporting event. Back in that day, that it was still about we're, you're doing the sequencing to gain and then maintain an advantage to try to win. And now it's just the moves themselves, mm. you know, that um, sometimes inadvertently the performer um, basically buries the very thing that he just did because he's done one big move, the guy gets right back up like nothing ever happened. And then does another big move, and then get another guy gets right back up, and like nothing ever happened. And then all of a sudden, that guy that was having things done to him, I call it light switch wrestling, where it's click, okay, you get your offense, and now immediately I'm going to stand up like nothing ever occurred, and click, I'm fine, and I get my offense, and I'm going to do a bunch of big moves. Now click, you get your offense, and you do a bunch of big moves. Then click, I get some, click, you get some, click, I get some, we go home. You know what I mean? It's it's uh, it's it doesn't work because it doesn't. It's no longer like a real sporting event anymore. There's no one person that looks weaker and is like they're struggling to get back in the race. You can't cheer somebody on because they never look like they're near almost about to be beat because they're too worried that they'll look weak and that they have to stand back up and do their moves, you know? And, and again, to that point, if, uh, you know, answer the... the the first question was the commentator. The second question is, why am I paying a referee to be in the ring with you? If what you say is true, that the audience gets it, they know, and just so everybody understands, everybody's known since 1920, okay? In 1976, when I was 12 years old, and I proclaimed that I wanted to be a professional wrestler, and I love them all dearly, but none of them were men's candidates, okay? And none <laughs> of them were professional wrestlers, oh but every one of my family members all proclaim to me, why would you want to do that? That's fake. Well, that takes care of that question, that right? Of that question. So right. how did they know? 
Oh my god. Because wait a minute, wait a minute. Wrestling's fake? Yeah. Power, power, power just found that out what right this, this moment, Rack right now. Way, way to go, Al. Oh, come on, man. Sorry, Pharaoh. Dream crusher. Question three and four. Question three. As a promoter, if what you say is true, right, everybody all knows they're in on the rib. They know it's a work. They, only, they don't pay to believe in it anymore. They just want to see you do your cool stuff. I get it. Then why am I buying championship belts for you to work up your way up a competitive ladder to become the champion of something if nobody nobody believes in that and nobody's buying a ticket to see it. Speaking of that, the mm. importance of a championship belt. Yeah. I mean, look, please. we got different sections in wrestling where it got really big, then it kind of shrinks up and big. Sure. And we're in a COVID era now. We know what's going on. But yeah. when they felt they had to turn over these belts, mm. even though it was doing well for ratings and everything else, it killed the... Huge intercontinental Killed champion Killed the worth fans, of the belt. Right, loved it to death. Yeah. That that belt is belt is useless. I, I it kills me. Yeah, it's uh, it, it again though. That's the, you know, if you don't place it like it's a competitive ladder, being you know to where because used to that intercontinental championship was like it was the next step just below the world heavyweight title, you know. Now it's just ah, they're they're a prop and we'll throw it on so and so and. Your opinion you know, on 50-50 booking, because I believe that's what ruins the belts. I do. I believe it ruins matches. Yes. You know, it ruins I, characters. Yeah, it ruins characters. Credibility. You, you need to, people need to, uh, people need to at certain times look certain ways um, and, uh, and, you know, do certain business. Um, if I'm going to book you as the next heavyweight champion, I need you six months ahead of time wrestling like you are the heavyweight champion. So that when I finally shoot the angle to where you're going to wrestle the heavyweight champion, no one in the audience goes, what? They all go, yes, here's our chance. Finally. We're going to see somebody that might be able to take the belt off, yes. even if even if the babyface is the champion. Well, oh, my God, now the babyface is in trouble because this guy clearly could be the next heavyweight champion. You know, he's a threat. There's that. That's called heat. Heat's not what the wrestlers think today, that it's a it's a step in a match that they've been taught that stupid seven step formula or seven step formula um, oh or God. it's the heels offense that's not heat heat's a want it's a need it's a desire and the art of professional wrestling is telling a story within the context of a competitive situation and creating heat in that story by teasing the audience with something they want and then taking it away right. my right. last question for the performers out there who actually believe that wrestling has changed and that it's not about winning and losing and they don't care and you know we just I just asked the question of why you know why do I have a referee in the ring anymore because you're not going to you're going to ignore him anyways and you're, you're going to do stuff right in front of him mm -hmm. you're going to make him useless mm -hmm. you know he has no real authority and if he has no real authority you can't generate any real heat but my biggest question to guys out nowadays guys and girls is if what you tell me is true, then why do you get the boo-boo face when I ask you to lose? Ah. You get boo-boo face, huh? Oh, they boo -boo, They get the big pouty it's lip. Boo -boo face. Because you know what? There's credibility in winning. and well, No, there's not. not you a can't have right. it both ways now. He's got them. You're right. He's well, got them. You can't you're right. tell me that, hey, it's not, that the fans don't care and they're, they're only here to see the cool moves. And I can ignore the referee, and I can just, and then I can just get up after you've given me 32 big moves and act like it never happened, because then I, because the only reason I'm going to give you 32 big moves is so that it looks like I have a chance of winning, and you're in trouble, and you might lose. But if you just stand up, well, that all goes away. But now you're going to wrestle like that. But now when I ask you to lose, you're going to get upset and be like hurt, and you're going to, oh, you're trying to bury me. No, I'm not. Expectations